You might not guess from the previous videos on this channel, but I love FPS games. My first real gaming experience was playing Team Fortress 2 for hundreds of hours in middle school, and over the years I've enjoyed many other games in the genre, such as the Half-Life series, Payday 2, Borderlands 2, a brief stint with Rainbow Six Siege, we don't talk about Rainbow Six Siege, Titanfall 2, various Quake and Quake-like games, and even the Taken Before It's Time Brink. But throughout my lifelong gaming hobby, there's been one FPS game that I never really understood, Counter-Strike. My name is Lemajob, and let's talk about the largest free-to-play first-person shooter on the market currently. Something about Counter-Strike never captured my interest, even though I've owned it since before it went free-to-play. But in retrospect, I think that may have had something to do with the way I was thinking about the game. Whether you can attribute that to the FPS market being swamped with samey, Middle Eastern set, low time to kill titles, or some form of internet-induced ADD not letting me enjoy the slower movement, I never gave Counter-Strike a fair shake. I had played a couple games with some friends, but the economy aspect was confusing. I didn't know what guns were good or bad, and the idea of memorizing hundreds of grenade lineups seemed boring. Counter-Strike sat in a weird middle ground for me in terms of genre as well. It wasn't quite a tactics-oriented milsim game like Rainbow Six, where game knowledge determined your victories. Nor was it a fast-paced arena shooter like Quake, where drilling movement and map layouts gave you the edge in every fight. It even felt dynamically different from other Source Engine games I had previously enjoyed with Team Fortress 2 having drastically high time to kill, as well as pre-built classes who performed certain roles and countered other roles, and Half-Life living by a motto of constant movement in its own right. Something clicked for me recently, though, as a result of a talk about skins from an artist at Valve, and an image for the announcement of Counter-Strike 2. My mindset shifted about the game, and I finally understood what Counter-Strike is, and have started to enjoy it for what it is, a sport. When I looked at this new header image from Counter-Strike 2, something changed in my opinion about it. It's not even so much that the bright colors somehow made my lizard brain happier than seeing the drab CSGO imagery, but that the tone feels completely different. CSGO's promotional imagery has this very police sim feel. It's dark blues, it's pictures of police, bad guys in masks, SWAT and terrorists in Middle Eastern settings. CSGO's color palette, in general, tends to be muted and desaturated, and as a result, it pushes the image of the game as something closer to a breach and clear mil sim light like Rainbow Six. But the new CS2 images look like something more of a sports magazine advertisement for an upcoming prize match. It feels like a flyer, something you'd see posted on a telephone pole. Do people still post things on telephone poles? That honestly might be illegal by now. The characters in this picture also don't look like police special task forces or radicalized militants. They look like dudes you might see at a local airsoft tournament. This image made me feel differently about how Counter-Strike was meant to be enjoyed, and this talk from a developer at Valve put words to that feeling. Counter-Strike isn't a mill sim, it's a sport. So people like anodized finishes a lot. More than half the items on this list are either anodized or metallic. They also like saturated colors on black or very bright finishes. And they also like weapons that have a sleek kind of spy movie aesthetic. The easiest thing to see though, looking at all of these items is that most of them have a single predominant color. If we look only at the rejects, we can see again a pattern. These are all camouflage inspired. In fact, these are all items that look like our original inspiration. So although we started off thinking that the military camouflage was really cool, it turns out that what our community really values are finishes that look more like paint guns. That was great. We needed a reminder that although Counter-Strike is military inspired, it's not a military simulation. It's a sport. When our customers play, they don't aspire to be soldiers. They aspire to be elite Counter-Strike players. So maybe it's not that surprising that the closest real world analog we've got to our preferred aesthetic comes from a sport. 
Now, some of you will certainly roll your eyes at hearing that. You already know that Counter-Strike is a sport. It's obvious, it's an eSport. People have been playing Counter-Strike professionally for so long that if the eSports scene was a person, it could legally drink in every state in the US. But I don't mean that Counter-Strike is just an eSport. I've played eSports games before. I have nearly 3,000 hours in Dota 2 over the past decade, and spent probably half as much time outside of the game watching pro matches and studying strategy. I've played countless hours of Overwatch, and tuned into many of the Overwatch League games during their heyday. I've even spent a fair bit of time in games that are trying to be esports, but don't quite cross the threshold of competitive balance necessary, like Apex Legends or Hearthstone. I'm familiar with esports, the scene and the mindset. When I played Dota or Overwatch though, they don't feel like playing a sport like baseball or soccer. They feel like playing a game. I felt like I was controlling a piece on a board, like I was playing chess or some complicated real-time monopoly. There was a gamification layer in leveling up your character, gathering gold, charging your ultimate or casting abilities. Things that felt distinctly game and not sport. What I mean when I say Counter-Strike is a sport is that it is a sport, not just an e-sport. I'm sure some people will take that distinction as an insult, but try not to read too much into it. Counter-Strike is possibly the closest thing in gaming to a regular IRL sport, at least that I have played in my many years as a gamer. And of course, I'm excluding sports-based games that are already ports of real-life sports into a gaming sphere. In stark contrast to games like Overwatch or Dota or Rainbow Six, each player is on an absolutely level field at the start. There's no counterpicking, no meta heroes that get instantly locked in or banned, no paywalled guns that make you better or worse. Each player character's strength is determined by the strength of the player, not statistics that the game decides before you log in. Because of this, team roles aren't determined by what type of hero is best suited for a role. They're determined by what a player likes to play and is good at. Being an AWPer in Counter-Strike isn't limited to picking the AWPer class at the start of the game, or swapping to it in the middle of the game. You just need enough money to buy the gun. If your skill set is precision with long-range rifles, you can even buy an AWP light in the form of an SSG earlier on for less money. Alternatively, if you're better at playing a sneaky backstab role, you can lurk around with a shotgun or SMG and surprise your opponents with a deadly torrent from an unpredictable angle. But regardless of how you play, if your strategy isn't working, you can change it up the very next round. Within a game, you can go from being a rifler to a sniper to a lurker to throwing by picking the R8 revolver, one of my favorite hobbies. The game does not dictate your role. You dictate your role based on your skill set. In this regard, Counter-Strike is a sport like soccer. Everyone can kick the ball if they want to, but a good team will have players who are better at defense and players who are better at offense, and each player plays their role in the game. But there's nothing stopping them from entirely abandoning their post and playing whatever role they please. The sports comparison doesn't stop with just the evenness of players' options, though. The game itself is segmented into short, concise bursts of play in the rounds, like the way play proceeds in baseball or football. After a certain number of actions are completed, the round of play concludes and everyone resets positions. After a certain number of rounds are complete, the team swaps sides, like turning over the offense role in a sport like basketball, or ending an inning in baseball. While games like Rainbow Six or Valorant have a similar segmentation system, the latter probably because of how much it copied from Counter-Strike, most other esports like StarCraft or Dota, or Battle Royale FPS like Fortnite or Apex, tend to be more about constant movement and action. Gameplay only ever soft resetting when players are not directly in conflict with each other. Drilling things like grenade lineups feel something akin to practicing your layups or pitching, 
getting a solid feeling for your fundamentals and making sure you have consistent aim from whatever angle you might need to approach. Similarly, drilling movement and aim feels like practicing dribbling in basketball or soccer. I could go on with sports analogies, but I think you get the point. This is honestly a feature of most esports, whether you're drilling movement tech in Apex or last hitting in Dota. The last thing I want to point out, and the thing that I feel really clicked with me understanding CSGO in this way, is that, with very rare exceptions, nothing in CSGO feels like it could not be done as a sport in real life. Now, obviously I'm not talking about making a Squid Game-esque blood sport where people are armed with real AK-47s, but in my mind, I can make obvious parallels to something close to airsoft or paintball or even laser tag. In the same way that a game like Dota takes the imaginative aspect of a text-based tabletop RPG and turns it into an aesthetic visualization, CSGO takes a gamified combat experience and extends it. With little modification, lots of expensive prep work, and attentive referees, you could make Counter-Strike a sport in real life, and it would largely play the same as the game. The only other game I could think that came close to the same sensation would be Rainbow Six before they lost the plot and started making a hero shooter instead of a tactics shooter. The cinematics of Rainbow Six actually make it clear that the lore reasoning for all of these operators to be in the same building fighting each other is that it is an expensive game of paintball where these ops are running training scenarios. Whereas Rainbow Six lost that immersion by introducing operators that have wildly unrealistic abilities, Counter-Strike keeps it simple with the aforementioned abilityless player characters. In that regard, it becomes the CQB training sport that Rainbow Six wants to tell its players that it is, and the player is able to become immersed not in the bomb defusal scenario he or she is playing, or the lore of the world of Counter-Strike, but in pursuit of the sport, and the story around it becomes more like a make-believe setting for the sport to keep being played in new ways. The revelation of the sport-like nature of Counter-Strike may have come to me late, but it has greatly improved not just my enjoyment of playing the game, but also my understanding of why the game just keeps growing in a market where FPS struggle to get and maintain a foothold. I also finally understand why people are willing to pay top dollar for skins, in the same way a fan might buy rare baseball cards, or an autographed football, or a sportsman himself might buy a nice brand of sporting gear and customize it to his liking. If CSGO is a game you've written off in the past, because of its slow nature sounding boring, or its slightly dated graphics didn't pique your interest, I would encourage you to at least give it a shot by applying the mindset that I've been discussing here. With Counter-Strike 2 on the horizon, with its shiny new graphics but largely similar gameplay, there's never been a better time to start learning and get the edge on players who will be trying it out for the first time. If you've enjoyed this video, Give it a like and share with some of your friends who love Counter-Strike, or maybe who have never given the game the chance that you think it deserves. Feel free to share your thoughts about Counter-Strike as a sport, or how you think of the game differently, in the comments below. If you'd like to contribute towards further productions, consider leaving a tip via the link in the description. And as always, thank you for watching, and long may the sun shine.